Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to put the last couple days work together and we're going to learn what is called the factor theorem, which will allow us to take our polynomials that are in standard form and to put them into factored form. And of course we would want to be able to do that so we could graph them like we did in unit one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this polynomial by x plus 2. So we'll just go ahead and we'll set that up and we'll use synthetic since it's a nice simple binomial. And of course it's a lot faster that way as you know. Okay, and we put our positive 2 up front. We're going to bring down our 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Negative 1, it becomes plus 16, which is 15. 2 times 15 is 30. And that, of course, actually gives us our remainder of 0. Okay, now I want to bring your attention to this just so that you notice that because this one has a remainder of 0, that actually means that x plus 2 is a factor of the polynomial. Let's just call it p of x just so that you get that idea. Okay, so that means we know then that x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 30 divided by x plus 2 equals x squared minus 8x plus 15. Okay, we can actually now just work with that expression. Sorry. And this means that x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 30 equals x plus 2 times x squared minus 8x plus 15. So I just brought the x plus 2 over. And of course, hopefully you can see that you could actually factor that simple trinomial right here a little bit further. Okay, so if we look at that, it looks like we're going to get x minus 5 and x minus 3. And what we have done is by doing first a division, we have actually gotten our polynomial from standard form into factored form. Okay, now the key here is going to be how to get that first factor, because in this particular question, I actually told you to divide by x plus 2. But we are going to need to use the remainder theorem to actually quickly find the first factor so that then we continue on the process. So let's have a look. Here is our factor theorem. It tells us that if x minus b is a factor of the polynomial p of x, if and only if p at b equals 0. So we're going to use the remainder theorem first to find out what value gives a remainder of 0, and then we know that x minus that value is actually a factor. We can deal with binomials that have coefficients, okay, and the idea is the same if we sub in something like b over a. If we get a remainder of 0, then we know that ax minus b is a factor. Okay, and we'll, we'll practice with a whole bunch of these. So to start off here in our first example, the first thing we need to do is we need to find the first factor. And we're going to use remainder theorem, like I said, to do that. What we're going to do to give us a few hints is we're going to look to the constant term at the end. We're going to look to that 6 or negative 6 as it is. And we're going to look at possible factors of 6. Okay, so possible factors of 6 would be plus or minus 1 with plus or minus 6, right? 1 times 6 will give you 6. Or we could have plus or minus 2 times plus or minus 3, right? Fact, those are the factors of 6. And we're going to start testing these out to see which of these values will give us a remainder of 0, okay? Now, technically, we, we need to pay attention to our form when doing this. So because this isn't actually called a polynomial, our first step is to actually say, let p of x, our polynomial, be x cubed plus 2x squared, minus 5x, minus 6. And that's so that then we can test out our factors. And let's try p at 1 first. So if we substitute 1 into that polynomial, we're going to get 1 cubed, which is 1, plus 2 times 1 squared, which is 2, minus 5 times 1, which is minus 5, 
minus 6, and that gives us negative 8. That means that that is not one of our factors. So let's try negative 1. If we plug in negative 1, at the beginning we're going to get negative 1 in the first term. We're going to get plus 2 when we sub negative 1 into the second term. Then we're going to end up with a plus 5, and then we're going to end up with our subtract 6. And voila, that gives us 0. Okay, so what we just found out then is x plus 1 is actually a factor. Therefore, x plus 1, sorry, is a factor. Now, when you are doing this, you will not need to show all of this work right here. You'll only need to show the one that works. Okay, so it's going to actually be this part that you're going to need to show. Once you find the one that works, you can play around with it in your head, you can use your calculator, and then you need to make this statement right here once you have found your factor. Okay, and once you've found your factor, then you can actually continue factoring and determine the quotient by just doing synthetic division. Okay, so now we're going to continue and we're going to do synthetic division with our same polynomial. So let's set up our synthetic division. We're going to divide by x plus 1, so we're going to put a plus 1 there. We're going to take our original polynomial, we're going to take the coefficients of that. So we have a 1, we have a 2, we have a negative 5, and we have a negative 6. Let's go through that process. 2 minus 1 is 1, negative 6, negative 6, and that gives us our remainder of 0. And we better be getting a remainder of 0, otherwise we did our remainder theorem wrong up at the top. Okay, so what have we found out then? We have found out then, therefore, that our original polynomial, x squared plus 2x minus 5x minus 6 equals x plus 1, right? Our first factor that we found. Then we have our quotient, which is x squared plus x minus 6, and then we should be able to take that trinomial just a little bit further by just using our simple or tricky trinomial factoring methods. So we know we have x's here, and then I know it's going to be a plus 3 and a minus 2. And voila, there again we have what is called factored form. And of course, again, like I said before, that is useful so that we could actually take that factored form and then draw the graph. So, of course, we're going to need to practice this method a whole bunch of times. So let's try one more so that you have a couple of x. Okay, so our first step here, we are going to make sure we write our statement. Let p of x equal 6x cubed plus 7x squared minus 9x plus 2. Okay, and to find our first factor, we're going to, of course, look at the plus 2, and we really only have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2 to, con to consider uh, using the remainder theorem. So p at 1 clearly is not going to equal 0. You can test out p at negative 1 as well. That's probably the order you're going to go in. Um, and I actually know that p at negative 2 equals zero. Okay, and if you don't believe me, you can take a couple minutes, pause the video, and try that out. This would, of course, mean then, therefore, so this is the bare minimum of what I need to see. This would mean that x plus 2 is a factor. And then I'm ready to set up my synthetic division. Okay, so I'm going to have my 2 here. My coefficients are 6, 7, negative 9, 2. Okay, 12. We subtract, you get negative 5, we get negative 10, which is negative 9 plus 10, which is 1, which gives us 2, and there's our remainder of 0. Okay, so what did we just find out then? We found out that our polynomial, do that again, <laughs> 6x cubed plus 7x squared minus 9x plus 2 going to equal x plus 2, that was our first factor, and then our quotient, 6x squared minus 5x plus 1, and of course we can usually factor that further. Looks like I'm going to have a 3x, 2x, 1, and a 1, and then of course I need them both to be negative. And there's factored form. So we'll practice this uh, many, many times in class tomorrow.